Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhaire Bagga and today I'll be playing the five minute blitz on Lee Chess with zero increment. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that we understand the complete flow of the game, uh, understand various positions from where what opponent is trying to do, what is our plan and how are we going to execute it. And post the match, we'll have a quick computer analysis as well, understanding the computer lines that what could have been done better, and how can we improve our game from there on. Before we start, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces here. I'll play the London system setup. Starts off with d4. Bishop on f4. And now we can develop knight on f3, pawn on e3. So it's important to take out the bishop uh, before you close the diagonal uh, by moving e3. So that's the point of playing bishop first. Uh, here I think I can play uh, pawn to c3, making sure the pyramid is created. It's a very important thing. And the opponent try, uh, tries to just break it uh, straight away. If I take, takes back, that should be fine. Let's take it. Takes. Now, a couple of things that I can do here. Uh, threaten the queen or just bring back the bishop. Um, I think I should play bishop here the idea is to weaken up his pawn structure if he tries to okay which means now we can develop our light square bishop on c4 so that the pawn is pinned here now develop the knight on d2, the last minor piece remaining. Again, couple of things we can bring back the bishop. That makes more sense because if he pushes the pawn forward, that weakens up his king side more. Two attackers, two defenders. So of course we cannot do much over there, but let's develop the queen. We are ready to castle either side of the board, but mostly I think we'll castle on the queen side, align the rook in the center, attacking the knight, moves the knight away, which attacks the bishop as well. How is knight takes on the pawn? Because it defends the bishop as well. Okay, he's trying to exchange the bishop. If I take, he will take with the pawn. Oh, if he takes with the pawn, that's bad for him. He takes with the queen. Okay. Now we can develop the other knight. Connect both the knights, maybe. The knight is safe for now. I think I should play h3 once. Trying to attack the bishop. Which will weaken up my pawn structure, but it's fine. The knight is also not guarded. It's only guarded with the bishop, so lots of stuff here can be a problem. Let's get the knight back. Now he can take the bishop and I take back. Oh, the center pawn was hanging there. Oh, okay. The choice here, I have to move. Let's move it on F1. He aligns, probably now simple as rook to e1. Mm, 
rook is guarded with the knight just in case um i should take here let's take We just play the pawn on g4, making sure the pawn never moves ahead. Okay, queen again comes, and this time it's attacking on the e2, so we have to move the knight. Probably will try to get the other knight into the picture now. Oh, he doesn't if we can exchange queens that should be helpful let's see if he's willing to we're losing out on time i'll try to play a bit fast here now it's just about removing the pressure from here if he doesn't take we are taking on the pawn with the knight his bishop is inactive gives a check I'll just move the king He's trying to attack the knight we can connect both the knights. If he takes, I can take back with the knights. He doesn't. I think let's move the king away. King has to be safe. Now rook is coming up. We can exchange the rooks. That should be helpful. Releasing some pressure. I don't think it's doing much over there. It takes, I take back. Both the knights are connected, so we are good. Okay. What can I do here? Knight attacks the bishop. Going for queen exchange, that's nice. Let's eliminate the bishop. And now it's probably an end game, which white should be better. Okay, he's trying to take the pawn. I need to defend it. Take. Let's take the king. Time pressure, that's it. Nothing more. Defending the pawn. Oh, I give away the pawn. Just fine. But where is the knight going after this? Knight is trapped. Yep. Let's save our knight. It's just about time now. There we go. We have a pass pawn. We're getting a queen very quick. This should be winning. Knight, I don't know. Let's get the queen at the end. Should be a draw then. Yep. We didn't have time to control that, otherwise this was winning.
Phew, at least save the game. Should have won though. But a draw against simulated player is fine as well. Let's analyze the game quickly. We started off with d4, spawns with d6. Bishop f4, knight on d7, then knight on f3. Plays uh, g6 here, developing the bishop from g7. We just try to build a solid pyramid in the center. He tries to attack the center straight away. I take, he takes back. Now, getting the bishop on g5, he develops the knight. The light square bishop comes on c4. Castles, uh, developing the knight. Tries to attack the bishop and I bring it back. Just trying to weaken up his pawn structure there. I bring back the bishop. He aligns the queen on e7. And now queen to c2, preparing to castle either side of the board. And he gives a free pawn there. And then he plays bishop. Yes, taking the bishop was bad, so I just... Oh, uh, so, uh, it was bad, right? So because he can take with the queen. Uh, but I thought of if I take and he takes back with the pawn, just in case, that's losing. Because now I'm forking a couple of pieces and he will lose a rook. He will go exchange down and he was pawned down already. So that would be 4.4 winning. So I took on the, that chance, but that was okay because I'm acting as well. And then I play h3. He gets the knight over to h5. Had to bring back the knight there. He takes, I take back. And he gets a good attack now after taking on the e3. I move by the king. He aligns the pieces. I go for rook exchange. What is computer saying here? Give away your queen. Oh, that's a nice move. Because now if I take, he takes with a check. And that's a folk on queen and king. And I'm losing. This would have been an amazing move. But these are tricky to, to be found there. He saves the queen and I exchange the rooks there. Then just playing uh, g4 here. The idea is to just control uh, the pawn from moving forward. Black is completely dominating here. If you see, it's 3.5 in favor of black. He has aligned another piece now. So yeah, I was wondering why is he not getting the knight uh, to c4. I remember saying that he will bring the knight now. That can be handy, but he doesn't. Th that move didn't strike him. And here I try to exchange the queens, and he doesn't. I have to move the king. And he tries to... Oh, that was again a bad move, because he could have just tried to trap my queen over there. Where's the queen going? If I keep in the last rank, I think... That's again bad because it comes with a check. I move here. Yep, bishop comes in, but I can take. Takes with the queen. And now the only move, and I'm now losing the queen. So that could have been a line there. Black is completely dominating, but doesn't find the right move, but plays uh, c4 here, which, is, which brings the game to a draw situation. Now I play knight to d4. He gets the knight finally uh, on d5. I save the king on h2. Uh, and then trying to exchange the rooks. Now, as you see, white has started to gain some control here in the game. Uh, he takes, I take back. Tries to save the king. I try to attack the bishop there. And he goes for queen exchange. Which, as you see, is in favor of white. So we take, takes back. I took on the bishop as well because bishops can be... Very tricky at the in the end game. So just eliminating the bishop. Now it's a knight and pawn end game, and white is pretty strong. Uh, these double pawns are not really bad. Uh, king is also quite good. I just tried to move my knight first, attacking the pawn. Now he's trying to attack on uh, the a2, so I defend that first. He plays a knight to d3. I take on the pawn. I have to get the king. So do I in the center. And he attacks the knight now, so giving a check. Going back down now, defending uh, the base of the pawn chain, very important. He goes back up. Uh, this was a bit bad, but that actually helped eventually. I couldn't calculate that because there was less time uh, remaining with me. 
I played a pawn to g3. He takes on a free pawn. That's what he thought, at least. Yeah, I could have trapped his knight in the one, in one move there, but again, I was losing out on time, so I was just trying to play fast. And he gives a check, and now his knight is trapped. I take. He takes back with a pawn. Again, a bad move. I got my knight to safety, and then just trying to block the pawn, and then taking my knight towards the other side of the board, taking away some pawns so that I can quickly promote to queen. Uh, okay, computer saying you can just promote, but I took on the pawn first. And then I got the queen. So here I'm completely winning. Uh, it's made in 16, but the point is I am not having much time there. Uh, oh, I had to bring my queen on h7. That was winning, okay. But I came down, he gets over here. I can still do something about it, but I let him, uh, even that was winning, but eventually it was a draw because uh, there was not much time there. So yeah, an interesting game could have gone uh, either ways. Uh, had he found the right moves in the initial part of the game, in the middle game, uh, then black was probably very strong here. Uh, so that was well played by black, but uh, we, Always see that there's always a comeback uh, way uh, that if you hang in over there, uh, there's always a comeback around, and that's what I found in the game. Uh, and eventually, it's a draw, and I would I, I feel very happy with it because he deserved to win there. Uh, but it's okay, uh, we managed to pull a draw. Uh, at at the end, it was pretty tricky, as you saw. I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Do like and comment because it it motivates me to put up content daily. I am not missing up on either any single day so far, and I hope I'll continue uh, to do this for as long as possible. And please do subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. Thank you so much for your time. I hope there was something to be learned. Take care. Bye-bye.